<sighs> Bartiz, Bartiz, Bartiz. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Stephanie Yates. I am Buile, Steph I am for short, and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. In today's video, I'm gonna be breaking down everything I saw unfold between Nancy and Bartiste on Love is Blind season three. If you're curious, stay tuned. What's on your Heads up, you guys know this is gonna be a ton of spoilers. So if you haven't finished Love is Blind season three and you don't like spoilers, definitely finish that and then come back. So this is actually the third video that I am doing for Love is Blind season three. I also already have a video out on Zenab and Cole as well as Matt and Colleen. So check the description box and the cards for the links to those videos. So the interesting thing about Nancy and Bartise is they are one of the only couples and definitely the only couple that I've talked about in these reviews for this season so far that actually had strong connections with other people that could have have led to proposals. So Bartiz, he was between Raven and Nancy during the pods dating experience and Nancy was between Bartiz and what's the name of the guy who was crying with the eye drops? Andrew, that's his name, Andrew. So Nancy and him, they had a connection. She told him she could see a future with him. So both of them were, I think, really trying to utilize this dating process and make good connections. Things I noticed early on, Nancy just really seemed very mature. Like I would say probably more mature than most of the cast. In the questions she was asking and the things that she was noticing, one of the things that I loved that she noticed about Andrew because he did ultimately propose to her. I think that's the first time we saw someone propose and it not be accepted. You guys let me know in the comments if that's the first time, but I'm pretty sure that's the first time we saw that air at least where there was a proposal that the person said no to. But the reason that she said no, I was like, okay, this woman is paying attention. She said that Andrew was too cool, calm, and collected for her. And she does not see that in a husband. She doesn't want anyone that's putting up a bunch of facades to be laid back. I remember she was asking him about if he has any concerns about marriage, basically tying him down to where he can't live the life that he wants to live, like traveling. And he never answered the question. He just started talking about his travels. He's like, yeah, well, you know, that's why I, I got into traveling. And then I went here and he just was like trying to flex and brag about all the places that he's traveled to and did not answer whether or not this was something that she needed to be factoring in if she's thinking about marrying him, whether or not he's ready to settle down and make some of the sacrifices such as staying put and maybe not traveling as much. At least that's not what she saw it looked like for her marriage. And so I really like the way that Nancy asked her questions and the things that she was paying attention to. I really think that she probably just didn't have a ton of great options, but due to those experiences, she felt pretty confident about Bartiz. She was a Bartise or bust kind of person by the end, but that obviously was a very quick turnaround because I don't know if it was the same day or just the day before someone else had proposed to her, right? And she considered it. So they were the two that had other options that we actually saw being fully explored. It's not that they were just interested in someone that broke up with them. Like they were both pursuing other people while they were pursuing each other, which I think is the best way to handle the show is like, you know, to really be open to the process because you only get get 10 days with these people. So like, you don't wanna like just zone in on one person and not experience dating. But once you do find that person, that is your person. I love the such and such or bust mentality. I talked about that in the Colleen and Matt video. So some things Bartise did early on that had me looking like, hmm, is this guy really ready for marriage? I thought it was odd, for example, that when Raven was talking to him in the pods about one of the things that she was a little bit um, ashamed of or embarrassed about was that she used to be like a bottle girl. Like, you know, basically, I think she was like serving drinks at the club, something like that. Some men weren't comfortable with that because obviously there might be like flirtation and like sexy dressing and things like that. That's a part of that job. And he's like, oh no, that's not a problem 
for me. She was not perfect during their, their dating process. I think she just really wasn't that interested, but this is not a video about Raven, right? But what I thought was weird was that the day that Bartise was breaking up with Raven, I guess it was a grand gesture. He left a bunch of fake money on the ground <laughs> to symbolize that he was cool with her being a bottle girl. Like what? I was like, what is this? Like she was like, it's the stripping for me or something like that, that she said. And he's like, well, I just thought you were gonna think it was so funny. And the guys were saying, oh, she's gonna be offended. And I was like, oh no, she's gonna think it's funny. She's like, yeah, it's funny. But he was doing that to break up with her. Like what? You knew you were breaking up with her and you thought it was a good idea to like, well, I'm gonna just send you off with a bunch of fake dollar bills on the ground. Like that's where I was like, okay, his way of thinking is very warped. And I thought that was extremely odd. I also thought that Bartiz wasn't really fully committed to the process because he would be asking questions to Raven to basically find out if she was hot. He's like, like, you know, I assume both you and I, we would turn heads if we walk into a bar, like us together would make sense. Like we both work out, we're fit. Another thing that he said that just really rubbed me the wrong way is like in his moment of vulnerability, he was saying to her, like, I'm not going out to the club every night looking for girls. I'm out there looking for a girl who can make me feel better. About what? Like Raven was like, yeah, see, and I feel guilty because like, I'm not going to be that girl to make you feel better. You know, like what did he mean by that? And that really leads to so much of my synopsis of Bartise's character is the fragile ego. It's easily built and easily destroyed. What he's saying there, I believe is that he's looking for someone who's going to make him feel really good about himself. You can see like whenever Nancy would give him compliments, like even just saying like, you're my man or anything like that sends him soaring. Like you see him visibly get giddy and excited, which is great. But just as easily, we see that that same excitement can be shattered and turned into shutting down or shutting off really quick. So the fragile ego is what you want to pay attention to throughout the course of this analysis, because that is what I think contributed the most to the downfall of Nancy and Bartiz. There were small signs of the fragile ego that I saw with Bartiz from very early on, even when he proposed, right? He asked Nancy at least twice that we saw on camera, like, do you like your ring? Is it good? Is it good? She already said that it was good. Like he kept asking is, do you like the ring? Do you like the ring? Now I assume that the show pays for these rings, but like the fact that he picked the ring, like he needed a ton of validation to say like, oh yes, I love this ring. You did a great job. I love this ring. And you guys, I'm a words of affirmation person. So I love getting praise too, but at a certain degree, it can become exhausting when you have to continue repeating yourself, especially in the same setting. And if you say or do anything that could possibly possibly counter that positive view or outlook, the person could shut down. And we saw that happen with Bartiz. Now, once the couples have gone to Malibu and they are experiencing, you know, this paradise before they have to go into the real world with their engagement, there are some odd things happening. Obviously, you know, like Nancy and Bartiz, you know, you, you could tell a lot of times when Bartiz is talking, he's not really, it doesn't look like he's not really talking to the camera or the producers. Like he's trying to convince himself like everything's great. Like I find Nancy very physically attractive. Like he just keeps saying these things over and over again. Who are you trying to convince? right? It, it gives this feeling of like desperation of I have to make this true. And so when he kept saying that he did find Nancy physically attractive and things like that, I was like, okay, I hope that's true because the way you're acting is like, it could possibly not be true. He just seemed really tense. And I, I can appreciate that he was trying to say that because he didn't want to hurt her feelings if that wasn't the case right away. But that was one of the moments where I was like, this might not end very well. Quick note, guys, if you're trying to seduce someone, Maybe don't talk about how to creatively get poop down the toilet while you guys are in the middle of making out. It could ruin the moment. So that's just a quick tip. But on a more serious note, by the time the couples met the people that they've been dating in the pods, that's when I think a lot of us knew, okay, this is probably not going to go very well. Bartiz sees Raven and he tells the camera like she's a smoke show. I knew she was gonna be hot. See, and that just confirmed what I was thinking earlier on 
on when he was in the pods trying to confirm this over and over again like if she's hot is like he had the speculation and he needed that confirmation and it was just so interesting to see like how he was responding to that I watch body language a lot it's a huge part of what you have to do as a therapist because you don't hear all the time what the absolute truth is and sometimes you've got to pay attention to other cues that'll give you a little bit more truth and like the kiss that Bartise gave Nancy, that moment when Vanessa and Nick say, congratulations on your engagement, it was just so tense. Like I, I felt the awkwardness pouring out of the screen. And it could be a misinterpretation of the moment, but for me it felt, the word desperate's what's coming to my mind. Like it seemed like, again, something to prove. Like everything's great over here, nothing to worry about. Like we're doing good, we're happy. That was the image that I was getting that he was trying to portray, which at at that time was probably true but you're also grappling with the reality that raven is more of your physical type so everything's not perfect you know and it's okay if everything is not perfect but i saw time and time again where he would use so much energy to prove to himself that something was going really well and just to later really get exhausted on that energy and just shut down now the pool party you know this is where we saw a lot of weird things happening obviously I talked about the Cole Colleen conversation in both of the last videos, but Bartiz and Raven also had a conversation. Could have been inappropriate, was inappropriate on one of their parts. Bartiz is saying things like, yeah, I knew you and I, we would make sense. We look good together. And I remember he even said in the pod something like, I'm not trying to say I'm a super hot guy, but I'm like, no, that's exactly what you're saying. You know what I mean? Like you're doing the exact opposite of what the show is supposed to stand for outside of the very purposeful drama that we see but anyway I think that with Bartiz in this moment in this conversation with Raven he keeps trying to hit on her and she basically keeps shutting him down I loved in her conversation the confessional where she's talking to the producers after that conversation and she says that basically like all he was talking about was like her look and that a lot of girls would be super flattered by that but that's just not something that she's looking for at this stage in her life basically like that's not what she came on here for and I was like yes thank you because a lot of girls you know I really had this impression of Raven as very vain from the beginning of the show and maybe some of that is still true but I think she's just kind of clear on what she wanted and it wasn't Bartiz so a lot of those moments where we saw her looking really vain were in moments with Bartiz and I think she was just kind of like bored with him like I think she knew pretty early on that he wasn't in her top but he thought she was in his top and so she was like okay well you know I'll see this thing through so that was a moment where Raven actually gained a lot of respect for me because I was like okay she knows what she's looking for and she can hear the same stuff I'm hearing which is it's all superficial. Bartiz has an obsession with image and she could see right through that. The next moment that I want to talk about is the conversation around abortion. I'm not going to talk about if one of them had the right view and one of them had the wrong view because I don't believe that that's my place but what I will say is that I think it's very odd that Bartiz thought it was appropriate to open this discussion up to his family the first time that they were visiting. That was really odd to me and I remember sitting there thinking why in the world would you put Nancy in the hot seat like that? I mean you got his sister crying over here like what? Why are they a part of that conversation? And that's when it really became clear to me that Bartiz he seems to be very reliant on outside opinions about what is good or bad if we were to keep it very simplistic right he seems kind of unsure about those things on his own he tries to portray a very confident person he seems to be very very reliant on outside validation and so what he was doing in that moment I believe is like I don't know what sense to make of this so what do you guys think like let's have a family discussion about that and in that moment I started thinking well hey maybe Bartiz comes from an enmeshed family I talk a lot about enmeshment in other videos but just like a quick short hand enmeshment in families is really defined by low boundaries you know almost being like overly dependent on each other's perspective in order to function not knowing your values or views on things outside of like the group perspective um, and your worth really being tied to the value that you bring to the family and so I think that for Bartiz he really needed to know what do his parents think about this what very specific hypothetical situation that Nancy 
Lindsay brought to him based on some of her professional experience. Like, you know, for me, it wasn't about who's right or wrong when it comes to talking about abortion. It was why he thought that it was appropriate to include his family in this very private conversation. So when you are dating, especially once you're engaged, married, you all have to start negotiating and working things out on your own. It is wonderful to have the support of family and to have your families blend and have relationships, but you don't want to be dependent on your family to help you decide what you think is right or wrong about a situation. Because that's how you end up having relationships that are not really in line with what you're wanting. It's in line with what your family expects of you. And that is what worried me about that. Another time that Bartiz showed that he was really dependent on outside perspectives is that when he first saw Nancy, he says he thought that she was very, very attractive. He was so happy, but he tells his sister when they are shopping I think for his tux maybe that you know he sent the picture to his friends and it seems like they weren't attracted to her and so it's like oh now he's questioning his attraction and even his sister was like hey like you can't let their opinion of her like affect your view on her like do you find her attractive and he was just so unsure of himself and that's where age I think maybe really played a part but I don't like to use age as a reason for things because we are all on very different journeys and some people experience things significantly earlier than others. So I just think his level of maturity wasn't necessarily where I would think it should be for an experiment like this that was going to require a lot of flexibility, even in your perception or perspective on what's acceptable, how to conduct a relationship, and really like how to open yourself up and really be vulnerable to a process that you really have no benchmark for. Now, something I really enjoyed watching. Now I will say that it was hostile. I will admit that, but I did enjoy watching Nancy's brothers really like grill Bartiz. Nancy, I think is a very mature, obviously well-established person, but it seems like she has particular blind spots. I'm not sure what it was about Bartiz that made Nancy not see those things because I wish she had that same level of insight that she had into Andrew with Bartiz. She found a sense of worth in being able to make Bartiz feel really good. And that's what he said he was looking for in a partner and it seems like this is a role Nancy plays in the relationship of a lot of people in her life. But because of that, her brothers could see how generic what Bartiz was saying about why he wants to be with Nancy, how generic what he was saying was. His brother was like, listen, she does that for everybody. Like, this is nothing unique to you. Like, she does that for me and I'm not marrying her, obviously, you know, that's my sister. Like, why do you want to marry her? When he said, that's bland to me, I was like, he's saying the right stuff. Like, Nancy's family was so on point. Like, I just felt like, her brothers, especially that one brother, like he was, you know, very, very perceptive. And it seems like that's something that runs in their family. Her mom, I could tell when she was like, I can tell if you're trying to pretend to be someone that you're not. And Nancy, she tries to establish boundaries with her family. Cause I imagine that they've had a history of constantly reacting to situations and maybe like a very extreme way. And Nancy is like trying to maybe like remove herself from that a little bit. You could tell that she's like very active actively trying to counter that. But at the end of the day, they seem to really care about her and they all seem to be pretty perceptive. And so I think Nancy might've been blinded by this pleasure she was finding in like serving Bartise's ego because basically as long as she was doing that, he was serving hers as well. But it was like a very conditional situation that is fragile, is a fragile type of relationship that's not very sustainable. So if we talk about the weddings, you know, I think a lot of us could tell that Bartise was gonna say no. What really bothered me was, again, him trying to convince himself. I really don't even think it was about Nancy, but him trying to convince himself, this is a forever thing. This is a great girl, like she's good for you. And doing the whole like permanent bracelet thing. <laughs> like, what was that all about? You know, if like you are having these doubts, it's okay to have the doubts, but don't do these extreme things to prove to yourself and the people around you that you're ready for something that you're just not ready for. When she gave him that thoughtful, heartfelt care package, the day of their wedding, you know, 
he could, I could see in his eyes that he's like, my, I'm about to break the heart of like this amazing girl. And what, again, the gift he gave her was extremely generic. It was very generic. And I think was the consistent thing is that he's looking at the image of what a good relationship looks like, but I don't think he's really able to make the emotional investment and sacrifice necessary to cultivate and develop a super healthy, sustainable relationship. At the wedding, when he said no, you know, honestly, I was proud of him I was happy for him because it could have been easy in that moment to just go ahead and say yes and have this like picture perfect situation but he did the harder thing which was to say no even though he knew he was going to get backlash from it Nancy's family was definitely becoming very over involved in that I think she also comes from what looks like an enmeshed family when it comes to the boundaries her mom would not listen to her when she's like mom go away let me talk about this you know those boundaries are clear Clearly not established well either, but it looks like Nancy's more so trying to what we call differentiate, which is like creating a level of separation between you and your family while also still recognize you play a part, you have a part, you're not running away, but you are your own person. She looks like she has started that process, but you know, I remember making a note like, hey, he did you a favor. Cause Nancy, I believe was going to say yeah. And if she would have, it would have been a bad situation. Like you saw everything you need to see in those four weeks. You you saw that and the answer for her should have been no. If she wasn't gonna say no, I'm glad Bartise did. I think they both deserve something different. Nancy in particular, I think she deserves something much better. Seems like the people in her life really feel that she adds value to everyone's life and she deserves that in a partner. And I think Bartise just has a little bit more fun to have in his life. Like I don't think he's ready for marriage period at this point in his life. Like he looks like he should enjoy life a little bit more, have a little bit more fun. And then once he has that out of the way, then he'll probably have better insight into what makes sense for him for a lifelong partner. Now, the main thing we have to talk about at the reunion is, I know that they were saying like after the wedding, Bartise was going on dates and stuff like that really soon after. Yeah, I, I, I mean, <laughs> that's not surprising to me. I think Bartise was like panicking at the commitment and wanted to get back to like living his young single life. Like that's not surprising to me at all. Uh, but what I thought was really interesting was to see Nancy displacing her anger at Bartise toward Cole. Like she's trying to avenge and advocate for Zenith instead of advocating for herself. And that's where I could see like Nancy is the person in her family probably that focuses on everyone else's needs. And she just doesn't have a lot of practice in knowing what's good for her, what works for her. You know, I don't think like she seems like she might be on a journey to getting there, but she still is more focused on how can I I support those around me instead of advocating for myself. So that displacement, that's actually the name of a defense mechanism. You know, it's kind of like projection where you're projecting your feelings onto someone else, except you are displacing emotions you have in a certain setting. Like let's say you're mad about something that happened at work and you come home and take it out on your spouse. It's like the emotion doesn't really make sense for that setting, but this might be a safer, more socially acceptable setting for you to have that emotion. And that anger that she had, I don't think she's at a place where she is ready to really stop protecting Bartise. She didn't have the type of relationship with Cole, so she could just say everything she wanted to say to Bartise to Cole. Because when you think about it, there are a lot of similarities. Both Cole and Bartise are younger than people they're dating. Both of them were the ones who had a stronger physical attraction to someone else they dated in the pods. Both of them vocalized that. So there were enough similarities where it made sense, but she was really holding Cole significantly more accountable than she was holding Bartise. Okay guys, so when I do these videos, I know that it's going to always look like, oh, well you're just on the side of X, Y, Z. And I feel that that is the struggle of really reviewing something that is on television, right? Because they need a narrative, even though it's unscripted, they need a narrative. They need people to fill certain archetypes on these shows so that people will watch. And you know, for each couple, there is like the bad person and the good person in the couple, and then they always have like a golden couple that we can all just love and you know just want them to stay together forever they have like no issues that we really see and so if you notice
notice each season, if you go back and rewatch, you'll see that there are a lot of similarities. So I can really only talk about what I saw. And unfortunately, I'm not working with this couple. I'm not their therapist. I can't say for sure, for certain, anything, right? Everything is speculation, guys. So, you know, I am, I know, talking a lot more about Bartise, but I just don't feel that I saw enough with Nancy to be able to really talk through that and what that would look like for me with clients because the way they present to her just seemed very cookie cutter. There's not a ton, but the reason I still love doing these videos is because what I see a lot of times in the comments are people saying, hey, I really resonate with this person on the show. And what they're looking for is support or ideas on like what's going on with them or someone they love and what can they do to kind of address those things or be more aware of them, which is number one. It's like awareness is the number one thing you need so that you can start making changes. And that's why I still like to do these videos. So if you guys have any other requests for these type of breakdowns, or if you want me to still do some other couples, let me know in the comments below. I'm always reading your comments and loving to see your ideas for videos that you'd be interested in watching. I truly appreciate your guys' support. You totally make it worth it. Like I'm so excited to film these videos because I just love seeing your response and talking, chatting with you guys. So thank you so, so much for watching. Please like it, subscribe to my channel, share it with any Love is Blind fan pages, anything like that. And I appreciate you for watching all the way until the end you definitely didn't have to but the fact that you did means so much to me and helps me out so much so thank you thank you thank you